Yeti has just released its first 650B wheeled bike for some years now. It's called the SB165 and I've been riding it. Now keen scholars of Yeti's naming structure will have deduced that it's got 165 millimeters of rear wheel travel. That's teamed with a 180 mil travel Fox 36 fork. It's got a head tube that's been tested to Yeti's downhill standards and it's got a 63.5 degree head angle making it Yeti's slackest bike. Until now, Yeti has been going all in with 29ers, with their SB100, SB130, and SB150, which they say are their kind of race bikes for people who want to go as fast as possible down the trail. Now, you could still race an SB165, you could race an EWS on it, no problem. But according to Yeti, they've designed it more for people who want to ride bike parks, people who want to do big jumps, and generally have a lot of fun on the bike. Now that's not to say that this bike doesn't climb well. It's got a 77 degree effective seat angle which puts your weight nice and far forwards to really attack climbs. It of course uses Yeti's Switch Infinity suspension system which has a lot of anti-squat near the sag point which means that it stays high in its travel, it doesn't bob or wallow as you're pedaling up those steep gradients. So despite those obvious gravity focused intentions, when I rode it in Slovenia, I found that it climbs remarkably well, and not just for a bike of this travel, it climbs well full stop. You can only buy the SB165 with a coil shock, and the bike has been designed exclusively around that linear spring rate that you get from a coil spring. In order to make the bike work well with coil shocks, which of course have the same spring rate all the way throughout the travel, they have made the leverage rate very progressive. So compared to a linear bike, which has the same leverage rate all the way through the travel, this actually has 27.5% more bottom out force than that linear bike. So that's known as 27.5% progression. Of course, with a coil spring, if you want to change your spring rate, you have to swap the spring and that can be a real pain in the arse. However, Yeti has compiled a lot of setup data from their test riders and staff to help you get a good baseline setting based on your weight. For me, the bike was set up with a 500 pound per inch spring and that was absolutely spot on for me. The Fox X2 shock has four-way adjustability, so it can be a bit of a headache to set up and there's a lot of scope to get it wrong. But the baseline was in the right ballpark and that's better than what most companies are doing with these four-way adjustable shocks. I got to ride this bike for just one day out in Slovenia, which has some fantastic trails to ride. Our ride started with a one or two hour, pretty steep fire road climb, where as I previously mentioned, the Yeti was phenomenally impressive. For, for a bike with this much travel, in XL it weighs 14.8 kilograms, so it's not the lightest, but because of that Switch Infinity suspension system, which basically just has enough anti-squat to hold you up, and stop the suspension bobbing, especially when you're sat down. So it feels super efficient. But more importantly, is just that steep seat angle which puts you in such a nice position for going up steep climbs. But of course, it's on the descent where this bike is designed to excel, and it really does. The only problem I had with the bike is that I couldn't get the handlebar high enough. Again, being tall, I like a high handlebar. And the longer the reach of the bike, the taller the handlebar needs to be to get in a comfortable position. Otherwise, you can feel too sort of stretched out if you have a low bar on a long bike. The Yeti has a 505 millimeter reach in XL that's combined with a 50 mil stem, so the bars are quite far away from you. So they need to be high to compensate. And for a bike like this, I would normally set my bar height to about 111 centimeters. I've set up so many bikes, I know that quite well. And I could only get the bar to 108 and a half centimeters even with all the spaces underneath the stem. However, despite that, I was able to feel really confident descending on this bike. It's got an 800mm bar, 63.5 head angle, with a properly composed Fox 36 Grip 2 on the front. So the front end of the bike feels really confident. It's got a 2.5 inch Mini DHF in the XO Plus casing which is a bit more puncture-proof than the EXO casing. I would prefer a double-down casing on a bike of this caliber. But nevertheless, it's a grippy front tire, a really confidence-inspiring front end, and just having that long front center gives you a really confident, stable feeling when you're steering through steep corners or plowing through really rocky technical sections, and there was loads of those in Slovenia. The bike was really in its element there. 
The 36 kind of leads you through that, but it's the rear suspension that really impresses. Once I had opened up the shock a bit, it really tracked the ground nicely. That coil spring still has an advantage over an air spring in terms of the initial part of the travel, that first touch where it settles into its travel nicely. And because the progression builds gradually throughout the stroke, it doesn't just come on at the end. You get a really nice predictable feeling when you're pushing into the ground, pumping through corners and the bike supports you really well, both when you're on the pedals, kind of sprinting up a janky climb, or if you're uh, kind of pushing into a berm or a jump, the bike feels really stable and supportive, partly because it's so long, but partly because the suspension is really supportive all the way through its stroke. The only real criticism I have of this bike is that it's got 650V wheels. And I think nowadays, now that bikes have got longer, you ride them more centrally, you ride them more over the front. And so having a bigger wheel on, on the back is kind of less of a problem. We also have better 29-inch wheels, better 29-inch tires. And if you're tall like me, I don't really see the need to have a 650B wheel anymore. I think for shorter riders, 650B is probably still great. But for me, I would take a 29er. I would take the SP150. But I, I think a 29er version of this bike would be right up my street. The only other caveat, of course, is the price. The bike I rode, which is the second top model of five models, costs £7,700 or $8,000. The least expensive SP165, which has a lower grade of carbon frame, which is a little heavier, and some slightly more basic parts, but still pretty good, costs £5,300 or $5,500. So that's the new SB165. Let us know what you think about the bike in the comments, specifically if you think there's still a place for 650B wheels. Also, don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the little bell so you'll be notified of new videos.